Today, we're going to rank over 35 plus different books popular in the self-improvement sphere. I'm sure there are many that are missing on this list. If you don't see a particular book here, it means I either haven't read it or I don't remember much about it. We'll categorize each book into one of four tiers. The S tier are for the must reads. These are books that can drastically change your life in multiple areas. Under that is the A tier, which are great books, especially when it comes to solving a specific problem. Then it's the B tier, which are okay books. They can help you with a specific problem, but probably are not the best book I would recommend for the subject. And then finally, we have the C tier, which is for books that I don't really recommend reading. With that being said, let's jump right in. Starting off, we have one of the most recommended books in the self-improvement world, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Now, this is a good book, but I think it's gotten to the point where basically everyone has read it. There are also certain tips in there that are a bit outdated in my opinion, such as using a person's name frequently. Overall, it's a pretty easy read, and I do still recommend it for people that want to start working on their social skills. So overall, I'd put this into the A tier. Next up on the list, we got Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. What's good about this book is that it's an extremely easy read. I remember finishing it in just two days while commuting to school in the subway. Personally, I think it's a great introduction to growing one's wealth, and it forces you to question the purpose of school, which so many of us are forced into. The book teaches you how people truly get rich. Overall, I would put this into the S tier because it really changed my perspective on things. It opened my eyes to how the wealthy elite make money. Next up, we got The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. To be honest, when I first came across this book over a decade ago, I thought it was silly, believing that your mere thoughts could attract certain things into your life. But over the years, I started believing that your thoughts do play a huge role. They do control your actions, which ultimately takes you to whatever goal you want. So if you're able to constantly think optimistically about a certain goal all day, chances are you'll actually get closer to it. Overall, I would place this into the B tier. It's an interesting book, one that you could read out of curiosity because there are so many believers and also because some of the advice in there might actually benefit you. Next up is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is the one book that I refer to the most when creating content on habits. It's one of the easiest to read books on the subject, while still giving you some pretty good advice on things that would increase your chances of building a habit successfully. It's really well written, so you can probably get through it in just a few days. Overall, I would put this into the S tier. If you're new to building habits, this is a must read. It covers most of the basics and gives you a viable strategy for building and sticking to your first habit. Then we got The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by Mark Manson. I read this book a few years ago thinking that it would be a fun read because I'm a huge fan of Mark Manson. But to be honest, I didn't get much out of it. I remember finishing the book and thinking, huh, is that it? I think it may have been because I don't struggle with giving too many Fs in life, so I didn't learn much from the book. But after seeing how popular of a book it became after that, I realized that maybe it is a book that could help other people who do care a bit too much about what others think. So overall, I'd put this into the low B tier. Next up, we got The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. This was actually the book that I referred to the most when building The Tamed Course many years ago. It's a good book, but I think compared to Atomic Habits, it's a harder read and a bit more outdated nowadays. So overall, I'd place this into the B tier. Then we got The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, which is a book that I must have given away to over 20 people by now. When I first read this book, I was 18 and didn't know what to do with my life. I was someone that was easily overwhelmed with emotions and would act without thinking. This book gave me perspective. It taught me that I am not my emotions, that the concept of I might not even exist to begin with. It's a really mind-blowing book that really changed my life, so I'll put this into the S tier. But I do tell most people to only read the first half of the book because the second half starts speaking about more religious subjects and that may or may not be your cup of tea. Next up, we have Models by Mark Manson, which is supposed to be a book for dating, but I see it as a book that's good for all relationships. It teaches you how to attract with honesty, and it also teaches you to adopt a abundance mindset in life. Basically, the idea that it's okay to get rejected because it's impossible for everyone to like you. This is the number one book that I recommend people to read if they have a hard time dating and making friends. It's a very easy and enjoyable read, so overall, I'd put this into the S tier. Next up, we have Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is one of the first self-improvement books I ever read back in high school. Napoleon interviewed hundreds of the most successful people of his time and wrote about what they had in common, the mindset and strategies they used to succeed. Overall, I would put this into the S tier, especially for anyone looking to improve the wealth aspect of their life. 
Then we got A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. I'll be honest, I'm a huge Eckhart Tolle fan, but this book was not it for me. I simply did not enjoy reading it. It speaks more about humanity as a whole and how we all need to get to a new level of consciousness. It shares a lot of the same ideas as The Power of Now. However, The Power of Now is an easier read and is more applicable to your day-to-day -day life. So I'm going to have to put this into the seats here. It's a book that you can check out if you're curious about that specific idea, but it's not really a book I would recommend to anyone who wants to focus on their self-improvement. Then we have The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, which teaches you how to become more attractive. Now, this applies to both romantic and platonic relationships. He teaches you what things pull people in and what things push people away. Understanding all of this can help you develop your own style and become a more attractive person. So overall, I would put this into the A tier. It's ranked lower than Models because Models is a way easier read and a better beginner's guide. The Art of Seduction is extremely detailed, which might be over overwhelming for beginners looking to improve their social skills. Then we have Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. This is a true story about how Viktor survived living in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. It's a book that speaks about our need to have meaning in our lives if we want to survive and thrive. It's a powerful book that really puts things into perspective. It also goes over multiple ways to develop purpose and meaning in life. Overall, I would put this into the high A tier as it is a book that really changed the way I saw things. But now that I think about it, more and more people are struggling with finding meaning in life nowadays. So I think I would actually move this into the S tier. This episode is sponsored by Blinkist, a platform that will help you expand your knowledge and speed up your personal growth. Blinkist provides insights from a curated selection of over 5,500 nonfiction bestsellers spanning across 27 diverse categories. Each title is distilled into concise 15-minute snippets available in text and audio. With Blinkist, you can absorb the wisdom of an entire book without having to spend hours and hours of your valuable time. You can use Blinkist whenever you need to quickly learn more about a subject. For example, let's say you're researching how to build habits. There are dozens of books on the subject and it would take you a really long time to select the best one and then read it. But with Blinkist, you can quickly learn about many strategies from most well-known books such as Atomic Habits by James Clear, which discusses the idea that small behavioral changes can over time lead to significant change. It goes over several powerful strategies for building habits such as temptation bundling and removing obstacles, which is why I really recommend you guys to check it out. Blinkist has a new feature feature called Blinkist Connect. Premium account users can share their account with an additional person. You can share it with your friend or partner and discuss the titles that you've listened to together, which is like getting two memberships for the price of one. You can start your seven-day free trial and get 25% off Blinkist Premium by clicking on the link in the description box below. Then we got The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I remember reading this book in one sitting on New Year's Day many years ago. It's a great book that speaks about how small, simple habits that improve your life by just 1% per day can lead to massive success. It's not the best book on building habits, but it sure is a motivational one that gives you reasons for building and sticking to habits in the first place. Overall, I would put this into the lower A tier. Next up, we have Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I actually listened to this book at the gym and boy, was it motivational. It's basically an autobiography about how David went from an overweight nobody into arguably the most hardcore person on the planet. It really puts things into perspective about the limits of the human body. Overall, I would put this into the A tier. It's a book that you definitely have to read if you're someone who complains about the cards you were dealt in life because David really shows you how anything is possible if you believe enough. Then we have 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson. This is a book that goes over 12 things that Dr. Peterson thinks that we should live by. I actually enjoyed this book quite a lot. It was an easy read and I am a fan of these list books. And I agree with most of the 12 rules that he lays out. Overall, I would put this into the low A tier. It's a good book to read, but there are definitely better books out there for solving specific problems. This is more like a book to read for expanding your overall thinking. Then we got The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, which basically goes over how it's possible to build an automated business so that you only have to work 4 hours a week. The truth is, you'll probably work much more than 4 hours per week, but even then, it's only possible after spending a lot more time setting up the initial business. But this is still a good book in that it teaches you that such a thing is even possible. I read this before I started trying to create an online business, and it definitely pushed me in this direction. The second half of the book is basically just resources 
resources for tools and things that you can use to build such businesses, many of which are outdated. Overall, I wouldn't even recommend people to read the entire book, just the first half which convinces you that building an online business is even possible. I would put this into the lower B tier as I feel like it's quite outdated but still a fun read. Then we got Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is a compilation of philosophical writings by one of the greatest Roman emperors in history. A lot of people consider this to be one of the greatest self-improvement books out there. I agree in the sense that it's the most well-known book on Stoicism and it covers the importance of thinking rationally, discipline, and learning to accept things that are outside of your control. But I'm going to have to put this into the low A tier because it's not an easy read. It's written in a very outdated style as you would expect from a 2000 year old piece of text. Which actually brings us to the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, which is considered to be the birthplace of Taoism. Now this isn't really a self-improvement book, it's more like a philosophical, semi-religious text, but it really influenced me. It made me feel more comfortable in times of stress, and over the years, as I've revisited the text, I've learned more things such as learning how to tap into the flow state more often, and using it to bring more happiness into my life. Like Meditations, it's not an easy read, but I would still rank this in the S tier as it is a personal favorite of mine that I've revisited many times before in the past. Then we got Dot Com Secrets and Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, who is one of the best internet marketers alive today. These two books are part of a series that goes over how to make money online in extreme detail. They go over the importance of building an audience and also how to monetize. Overall, I would put this into the low A tier. It's only useful if you're interested in creating some sort of online business. Next up we have The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. This is one of my favorite Robert Greene books, but then again I like all of his books. It's a huge textbook that goes over why humans act a certain way. It's a great book if you want to master social skills because it goes through dozens of examples of people and why they did what they did. However, it's a pretty difficult read and there's probably too much information in there, so it's not as practical as the other stuff on this list. So I'm gonna have to put it into the high B tier. Then we got The 5 Second Rule by Mel Robbins, which is basically where you count down from 5 whenever you find yourself wanting to do something but second doubting yourself, such as when you want to spark up a conversation with someone. Overall, it's a decent book. It can convince you to believe in The 5 Second Rule, which is honestly very effective. It's extremely practical, but I do wonder if you need an entire book to learn this one lesson. Overall, I would put it into the high B tier, especially if you're someone who struggles with procrastination or taking action in general. Then we have The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco, which teaches you how to become a millionaire by building a business. It's considered to be the best financial freedom book out there these days because of how practical the advice is. Personally, I found Russell Brunson's book more enjoyable, but that's because I was building a very specific type of business which Russell's books touch on more. The Millionaire Fast Lane is a better read if you aren't exactly sure what type of business to build in the first place. In fact, it's the number one book that that people recommend for all starting entrepreneurs. So I'm going to have to put this into the S tier. Then we got The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, a book so powerful that prisons sometimes ban inmates from reading it so they don't manipulate the guards. It's basically a book that teaches you about the many rules and strategies of the power games that people play. This is helpful for people dealing with trouble at work or at school. It's a book that basically everyone that wants to climb to the top has to read. With that, it's the most powerful of Robert Greene's books, so it's going to have to be placed into the S tier, especially if you're someone who falls victim to bullying and things of such nature. Just make sure to use the contents of the book for good and not evil. Next up we have Deep Work by Cal Newport, which is a great book that teaches you how to get into a state of intense focus so that you can accomplish whatever work or project you've set out to do. This is a powerful and practical book that is especially helpful nowadays in this world filled with distractions and shortened attention spans. Overall, I put this into the lower A tier. It's definitely one of the best books out there when it comes to countering procrastination. Then we have The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, which is one of the most recommended self-improvement books out there. It's very much like 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson in that it gives you 7 different mindsets and habits that you should stick to. It's a good book, but a quite long read. And because it doesn't solve a specific problem extremely well, I'm going to have to rank it next to 12 Rules of Life in the low A tier. 
Next up, we have Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. This is a very well-known book in the sales world. It teaches you the fundamentals of persuasion, how and why people are influenced by certain things. It's definitely a book that you have to read if you ever want to start your own business or make money doing sales. So I'm putting it into the mid-A tier. Then we have Mastery by Robert Greene, which he actually wrote because he felt like his previous books, such as 48 Laws of Power, were teaching people how to manipulate and use others. So he wanted to write something that would help people better themselves and reach the peak of their potential. Mastery is basically a guide on how to find your calling in life and then become the master at it. Personally, I don't think it's as great as his other books because a lot of the insights seem kind of obvious to me, but I think it's an okay read if you're young and still don't know what to do with your life. Overall, I would put this into the high B tier. Next up, we have Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. This is a book that goes over a couple of powerful ideas that you can use to improve your life and quote-unquote awaken the giant within. It's a decent read, but it's not an easy one as it's quite long. It also mentions the use of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, quite a lot, which, in my opinion, only sometimes works for people. Overall, I'd put this into the high B tier because there are better books out there for specific problems. Then we have Flow by Mihai Yi, which is a great book that covers everything you need to know about the flow state. Now, this is a state that you definitely need to master if you want to be able to get work done and also have fun with others. The flow state is one of the most enjoyable states of mind that we humans can enter, and the more you learn to do it, the better your overall life should become. Overall, I would put this into the mid-A tier. It's definitely a book you should read if you have a hard time focusing or finding joy in life. Next up, we have The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, which is kind of a beginner's guide to using stoicism to overcome obstacles in the modern age. Personally, I think this is a way easier read than Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, and it's also arguably much more practical. So I would place this slightly above Meditations as I would actually recommend this book over that, but I would still recommend both if you are truly interested in becoming a stoic. Then we got The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida, which focuses on self-improvement for men. It's a good read with some interesting ideas that you won't see in most other self-improvement books. This is actually where I first came across the idea of sexual transmutation, which ultimately led me to discovering NoFap. Overall, I would put this into the A tier as I do think every man should give this book a read at least once in their life. Next up, we have How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie, who is also the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is his lesser known book, which does a good job giving you tips to overcome worrying. It's an extremely practical book that is just as good as his others. If you're someone who overthinks things and spends too much time dwelling on the past, then this is a book that you must read, which is why it deserves a spot in the mid A tier. Then we got The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon, which is all about increasing your self-worth in your eyes, something that almost all of us struggle with. The book does provide good tips on how to do this, but in my opinion, it is quite a difficult read. I feel like there are other books out there that are easier to consume, such as Models by Mark Manson, which in my opinion, does an equally as good job in boosting one's self-esteem. So overall, I'm going to have to put this into the mid-B tier. Next up, we have The Four Agreements by Don Miguel, which is about four agreements that you need to make with yourself in order to live a great life. The problem I had with this book was that it was simply boring, in my opinion. The agreements seemed obvious and the book felt repetitive. So overall, I would put this into the low B tier. There are much better books like this, such as 12 Rules of Life or even 7 Habits, which are easier reads and also deliver more interesting tips, in my opinion. And finally on our list, we have Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman, which speaks about EQ, also known as Emotional Intelligence. Now, there is some controversy as to whether or not EQ even exists in the way IQ exists. My take on it is that it's something that can be trained, and this book is a good book to check out if you're interested in the subject. However, there are much better books out there for improving one's social skills, so I'm going to have to put this into the high B tier, as it's not as practical. And that's it. This is how I would rank the most well-known books in the self-improvement niche. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Besides that, stay tuned.